Hello and welcome to a new video from Advanced Power Query Series, video APQ00. Actually, before this video, we already posted six videos from the series Advanced Power Query. However, I believe this video should be at the beginning of this series. Why? Because it's talking about M language step by step, and also you can consider it a beginner's guide. And because this subject is a little bit long, it will be divided into three parts. The three parts together are going to discuss the following subjects. At the beginning, we're going to see an introduction to M language. We'll see the structure of M language, how the M language is built. Then we are going to look at the applied steps and then the difference between expressions and values. And finally, value types in M language. When you look at the value types in M language, we need to start to dig more and look at the different types and we're going to discuss three different types first one will be the primitive value and then function value and for this part we are going to stop here next part we are going to talk about the structured data values again we need to dig more into the structured data values and for sure we are going to look at lists records and tables here will be the end of part two and in part three, we are going to discuss an example of how to build a query from scratch. We are not going to use the user interface. Instead, we are going to use the advanced editor 100%. Before going to the subject itself, I need to talk about my source. Actually, my source was the docs.microsoft website. It includes everything that you need about Power Query. And also it contains all M language functions. In my mind, it works like a Power Query manual. It contains everything that you need about Power Query, including all M language functions. So I recommend that you go there and have a look on the content of this website. And also you can save it as a reference when you want to look at something that is not very clear for you while watching this video. And finally, I want to let you know that this video is a little bit different because it will contain more of a theory and theoretical discussions. This is not usually what I'm doing while recording videos for Power Query. However, it will contain also some very simple examples trying to explain the theory that we are presenting here. So my recommendation here, please don't ignore the very simple examples that we are going to present. I'm going to leave a link for the PDF document below the video in the description box. Please use it and copy the codes and put it inside the Power Query so you can apply what we are going to explain during this video. Let's go directly and start with the introduction to M language. Let's start by having a look on the structure of M language. Actually, each and every query is composed of variables and each variable is holding either an expression or a value, all together encapsulated by a let expression. If you open the advanced editor for any query, you will see something like what we have in the below example. You will see a let statement starting by let and ending by n, and between the let and n, you will have the code for your own steps. First step in this example called source, this is the name of the variable, after the name of the variable, you have the equal operator and then either an expression or a value. The first step called source and it holds an expression and this expression contains a function called table.fromRecord. Don't bother yourself by trying to understand the code right now. We are going to come to this later in this video. Second step called tax rate and also it followed by equal operator and it's carrying this time a value and the value is 0.2, a numerical value. The third step is a variable as well called tax and it is the calculation of tax. This is an expression calculating the tax by applying a summation of a list and then applying the tax rate to the summation of this list. After the n, you will see the variable that will determine the final result of this query. In this case, the final result of this query will be the tax variable, which is basically the last variable that we have inside the let statement. And this is exactly what we usually see inside our queries. The last step 
holding the last value or the final value that is called after the in in the let statement but this is not a mandatory so i can call any variable after the in i can call the tax rate i can call the source this is usually what we see but it's not mandatory i can use any of my steps or any of my variable after the in if I can call any of these variables, the source, the tax, or the tax rate, just after the in keyword in my query, this means that the order of the steps or the order of the variables is not very important. The query still can do all the calculation and execute all the codes regardless of the order. How this can be done? How the query can understand the sequence of the calculation if the order is not important? Actually, the query is performing the steps or executing the code in reverse order. This means that the query will look at the variable after the n. What is the variable called after the n? In this case, will be tax. So it will go back in each and every line and search for the tax, and it will find that the last step is the tax. Inside the tax itself, in order to calculate or execute the code inside the tax variable, it will see other two variables, which is basically source and tax rate. Means that in order to perform the first part of the tax variable, it will go back to the source step and do all the calculation in order to reach a final value for the source variable. Then it will go again to the second part, which contains the tax variable and go back to search for the tax variable. And it will calculate the final value of tax variable and finally, it will do the multiplication between the summation of the salary inside the tax table and the tax rate found inside the tax rate variable. And then it will give me the final result of the query inside the tax variable. The conclusion, query is performed in a reverse order. It will start with the variable after the in keyword it will go back and search for each and every dependable variable and do the calculation in reverse order accordingly the order of the steps itself doesn't matter to reach the final result of a query couple of points also here if you look at the name of the source variable you will notice that it is written in a different way compared to the tax rate variable you will notice that the tax rate variable starts with a hash pound then the tax rate the two words of tax rate is between double quotes that's why that is because of the space between the two words so if you don't have this space no need for the hash pound or the double quotation if you have the space you have to put it inside double quotes and you need to start by the hash pound in order to reference this variable with the space between the two words the second point i want to highlight here is regarding the separation between each and every line of code you can consider a line of code is assigned to a variable like the source and the function table dot from records and this line of code should be ended by a comma again the tax rate is holding a value of 0.2 and this is the code for this step or for this variable also it should end by a comma but if you look at the final step you will find no comma at the end so you need to separate each and every line of code or each and every step by a comma at the end except for the last step if you take a copy of this code and then you open a blank query and you open the advanced editor of this blank query and you paste this code and then you click on OK. Then you check the applied steps. You will notice that each and every variable inside the advanced editor will be presented by a separate step inside the applied steps. So we'll have a step for source, a step for tax rate and a step for the tax. Let's go directly to Excel and try to copy and paste this code and see what will happen. I am already in Power Query. I've created a blank query called M Language. I'm going to view and then advanced editor. I'm going to delete everything. Already I have a copy from the code, Control V to paste and then click on done. Here you go, you will see three steps in the applied steps. First one is source. We created a small table containing name and salary. Then we have the tax rate, just a manual input of the tax rate. 
and finally the tax calculation the summation of the column salary and then multiplying this summation by the tax rate reaching the value 44 if you check the source and then you go back to the formula bar you will find the same exact code that we had inside the advanced editor you will never see the name of the variable before the equal sign because the name of the variable here in the applied step and also you will never find the comma after each and every step but if you check the code after the equal sign all is written exactly like what we did inside the advanced editor let's try here to differentiate between expressions and values values like the example that we have here value is a numeric value like number one if i put this inside a variable or assigned this to a variable this means that i'm telling this variable to evaluate to number one however an expression like one plus one this means that i am telling this variable how to reach the result of two I'm not saying this is 2, but I'm telling you how to reach the value 2. Based on this, expressions are recipes for evaluation. However, values are the result of evaluation. A very slim difference, but is very important. In the next section, we are going to talk about value types in M language. Actually, we have three types. First one is primitive value. Second is function value. And the last one that we are going to discuss at the beginning of the next part will be the structured data values and we'll focus on lists, records, and tables. Let's go directly and start the discussion around primitive values. Let's talk about primitive values. Primitive values is nothing but a single value. And we have in Power Query many many data types for the primitive value however we are going to talk about some of them not all of them let's start by the number value the number value is nothing but a numeric value such as one or two or three and then we have the text value and the text value is nothing but a string of letters it can be something like abc however you can notice that in order to deal with text values, we have to use the double quotation exactly like what we do inside the Excel formulas. Also, the date is a type of primitive value. And whenever you enter a date inside Power Query, you need to use the hash date. And it is very much similar to the function date in Excel. You have to enter the year followed by month and followed by the day. Otherwise, Power Query won't understand the date format. In addition to date, the time also is a primitive value. The null is a primitive value, and you can notice that you have to write it in small letter. If you write null in a small letter, Power Query will understand it correctly. Also, there is a logical value inside Power Query, and it is nothing but true or false. And also, you have to write it in a small letter in order for Power Query to understand it. Let's go to Excel and try to input these values inside a query. I'm already inside Power Query. I've created a blank query and I name it primitive value. I'm going to the advanced editor. So from view, I'm going to select advanced editor and let's try to write or input some values together. I have already the let and in, just I need to delete the source step and let me declare a new variable let me call it numeric and then equal and i'm going to assign a value a numeric value to this variable let me put something like 500 and then i'm going to change the variable after the in keyword in order to see the output of this query and then click on done and here you go you have your entire query turned into a single value of 500 a single numeric value of 500 and if you look at the left hand side you will see the name of the query and on the left the name of the query you will notice a symbol one two three meaning that the output of this query is nothing but a primitive value and it is of a type numeric as you can see one two three let's go back to the view and then advanced editor and let's add one more input comma and enter I'm going to declare another variable. Let me call it string and then equal. Now I need to input something of a text type. I'm going to input something like a name. Let me input Amr. And for sure, it has to be between double quotation, as you can see here. And I need to change 
the variable after the in keyword i'm going to change it to string in order to see the output of our query the output of the last step in this query then i'm going to hit on done the entire query turned into a single value and this time it is a text value my name amr and then on the left hand side you see that the symbol changed to abc meaning that this primitive value of a type text let's go back view advanced editor one more variable comma and enter let me call this my date and then equal and let's try to enter the date without the hash date i'm going to enter today's date 9 9 and 2022 20, and then i'm going to change the output of the query to my date and then done and let's see what will happen you will notice that it will never understand the date this way and instead you got a value resulting from the division of 9 over 9 and then over 2022 20, and this is not what we need let's go back view and advanced editor before the date i'm going to write hash and then date then i'm going to open a bracket the first input needs to be the year so i'm going to type 2022 20, and then comma and then the month 9 and then comma the day is 9 and then close the parentheses and done and here you go this time i got a date if you look at the symbol on the left hand side it's changed to something like a calendar meaning that the primitive value inside this query the output of this query is a primitive value of a type date let's go and try to add another one view advanced editor and then comma let's add a new variable this time it will be nll for null and then equal and then i'm going to type null in small letters let me change the variable after the n keyword to nll i can just hit done and you will see that the output of the query changed into a single value of a null value or a primitive value of null value on the left hand side you can notice the question mark inside the symbol meaning that the output is null back to view advanced editor new variable comma and enter let me call this one logic this stands for a logical value and i'm going to input true t-r-u-e in small letters and then i'm going to change null to logic and finally done you have your output as true it's written in capital letters however your input need to be in small letters and also on the left hand side the symbol change to check mark and x mark both together a function is a value that when invoked with arguments will produce a new value or a new result for example i'm going to declare a function called my function as you can see in this example i'm going to use the normal equal operator or equal sign and then i'm going to define couple of parameters my parameters will be a and b both need to be inside parentheses because this is the syntax of declaring parameters for any function and then i'm going to use the goes to symbol or goes to operator which is basically an equal sign followed by greater than sign after declaring these two parameters and after the goes to symbol i need to tell power query what to do exactly with these parameters in my case i want a to be multiplied by b so i define this here a times b if i want to invoke this function there is many ways to invoke the functions however i can invoke it in another variable or in another step inside a query so i'm going to declare another variable called result inside this variable i'm going to invoke my function and i'm going to give argument for these parameters which is basically four and four this means that this function will multiply 4 times 4 and the outcome of this step or this variable will be exactly 16. Two things you need to remember. Functions parameters should be listed inside parentheses and also it should followed by goes to symbol and then you need to tell query what to do exactly with these parameters. I'm inside Power Query once again. I have created a query called function value. I'm inside advanced editor. Let me try to create a function inside this query. I'm going to delete source. Let me call this step or this variable my function. 
and then equal i'm going to declare two parameters for this function let me open parentheses first parameter will be a the second one will be b and then i'm going to use the goes to operator equal sign followed by greater than and i'm going to tell power query what to do with these parameters a times b i'm going to change the source to my function and then i'm going to hit done and let's see what will happen the entire query changed into a function and instead of seeing any data preview inside this area i am seeing two boxes two empty boxes expecting arguments for my parameters a and b let me try this i'm going to enter 10 and then 100 and then i have two buttons invoke and clear let me invoke and see what will happen you will notice that a new query created called invoked function and you have the final result the multiplication of 10 times 100 and the result is 1000 if you look inside the formula bar you see the only line of code is function value calling the query function value and inside parentheses it gives the argument of 10 and 100 this is one way to invoke the function value or i can go back to my original query and then from view advanced editor and i'm going to create a new step in order to invoke my function so i can just type comma enter let me call this result and then equal i'm going to call the function my function or the variable containing the function which is my function and then open parentheses let me add four and four as arguments and then i'm going to change this to result and then done and here you go you have the value 16 which is nothing but the multiplication of four times four so we can invoke the function inside the same query by adding a new step or you can just invoke the function by calling the entire function value from outside the query that was pretty much long so we are going to stop here next time we are going to discuss the structure data values if you like this video please like it subscribe to the channel and leave a comment and you'll find some useful links here please check them out see you in part two of the same subject and bye.